it's just a lot of corporate stuff, you know. Well, it's cool. Yeah, it's been pretty busy. Well, welcome, everybody, and uh, I'm glad that you're all here today. We had a little technical difficulty once again, but I figured out what the challenge is. It has to do with the interface with my Zoom, and we'll, I'll get Zoom to figure that out for me. Anyway, other than that, welcome to the 128th meeting of the Soundbroker Mastermind current event show. Uh, that's what we do. We're going to talk about current events, and we're going to talk about with whatever's on anybody's mind. So if you've got something that you want to express and you want it out there in the public eye, this is the place to do it, or at least one of the places to do it. Just remember everything you hear today is a uh, opinion. So, uh, you know, that's all I could say is use your own discretion, Google everything or Bing it or where anyway, DuckDuckGo has got a new browser out. Uh, that's that's if you don't want, if you don't want advertisement in your, uh, or people don't know who you are, Duck Duck Go is really good for privacy, and that is my Duck Go is cool for that way. So yeah, anyway, Brave, I have Brave, Brave is good too. So yeah, Brave Jan, is good too. What's that noise we're hearing? Uh, we were all hearing it, and when you left, it was real clean. Well, you know, it's probably me. That's all there is to it. I'm I'm, I'm a noisy guy and a guy, uh, but I can't answer that question because I don't know. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, you hearing the noise now? When you're not talking, no. But when you talk, it's it's there's a really high uh, background noise level. It's uh, it's like bad noise gate, Jan. Oh, yeah. well, maybe I know what it is, and I just fixed it. I believe. I think I just fixed it. Did I just fix yes. it? Yeah, sounds great. Now. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I just had my mic on a little too hot. That's all. I'm using a, a what they call a mic and Apogee M I C because it was easy to transport. It's very small and it's a dynamic mic as well. Um, it's really a beautiful looking thing if you you know if you want to Google it M I C, and it it's just um, it's just very very good. It has good ambient sound, uh, picks me up really good, and makes me sound better than I really do in real life. Yeah, you so, sound great right now. Yeah, it's great. Well, there you go. It's uh, now. If only I had something great to say, it would even be better. You know. <laughs> yeah. Welcome you know. everybody. Plus, so this uh, has plus, been a week yeah, and a half. We get, Bo, uh, we get Bo showing up in the uh, in the audience, Mike. Every once in a while, yeah. you know. Well, so props. Bo is very shy. She's super shy, and uh, so. Uh, but if you're not following me on uh, on on YouTube shorts, you're missing a lot. Plus, uh, Bo believes in, in, in putting anything she does on Facebook in her page, which she tags me with. So whatever we eat, you're gonna see a picture of it. Whatever we, wherever we go, you're gonna see a picture of it. And That's it such a girl really thing. That's a girl thing. <laughs> oh, man. It's sometimes it's crazy, you know, because we're, we're, I'm driving in the car. Next thing I know, she's documenting pictures, you know, and I'm, I gotta, you know, and of course, you know, and and, and you know, we got a comment saying, it says you guys are always so happy, and the reality is, it's that one second in time where she gets me to smile and takes the picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but being in a relationship is is really uh, it's just an amazing thing, especially when it works. Everybody wants to know about you, young lady. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, hey, get her on, get her on there to say hello. You want to say hello to everybody? Yeah. No, oh no. come on! Don't yeah, I, come on. don't be embarrassed. Come on. Hold on, let's see. <laughs> Craig doesn't bite. It's okay. Wow. No, she says no. Actually, you don't even know if she's real. It could be, a, you know, it could be uh, AI. <laughs> yeah. We sort of hear her a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So you want you guys want to you want to see a a future billionaire? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Horrible. I'm sorry. We're going to share it, uh, uh, David. <laughs> Uh, well, that's the, that was, actually that was the first thing I was going to say. The Powerball jackpot now is over one point two billion dollars. That nobody has nobody. You know, it's been uh, I, thirty-eight drawings in a row with no jackpot winners until so tonight. Hey. <laughs> I'll, I'll share. I'll share at a different rate with all of you. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So which would you rather oh, be? Oh, would I'm rather be? Say if I win it, Kurt's getting. A, a whole rack of, uh, of 48 Panthers and an EX. I think he Where wants I, something else. Where would I put them? If we uh, had I don't know. I'm running out of room, man. <laughs> uh, 
I'm literally. So which would you rather be, uh, the, the holder of that ticket or Taylor Swift? I mean, really, unbelievable. Taylor Swift, is that not amazing? She, she now has broken a record that nobody has even, including the Beatles, haven't been able to do. She now holds a record of all top 10 spots in the, in, in, in the well, not all 10, seeing it's the Billboard 100, but she has, her whole album is in the Billboard 100. Every, well, she's every, got the every top every 10 year. spots. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. you spots. know what? That's, what uh, that's the reason why, uh, David, that's the reason why, you know, the pop music has just forgotten about rock and roll. You know, at least Scoble's going to be there to go ahead. I mean, he's got Carly Simon opening up for uh, for Judas Priest. Good freaking lux. Yeah. Well, let me explain to everybody what you're talking about, and that is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Carly Simon has been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, you know, I mean, I, I think she was like, in those days, in the late 60s, early 70s. When oh, she yeah. Was, she was like, everybody's like, oh, my God, is she hot or what? Yeah, but she's opening up for Judas Priest. You know, and yeah. that one picture that she has, you know, that was a, you know, I hope I'm not giving something away and I hope I'm not being, you know, uh, I'm not, uh, what's the word I'm looking, uh, not awoke here, but there's the one picture of her that, that she's in that gray, that gray sweater. I mean, that's her publicity poster and her nipple is standing out like an inch and a half. Oh, you know? oh my God, Carly Simon. Whoa, hot, no belly. Dan you know, oh. Landy, uh, you are showing your co uh, colors as a proverbial New York, L.A. dude. I'm well, sorry. I was I was 18, <laughs> 19 years old. You know, a cold a, a cold breeze would have made me stiff in those days. You know, it didn't matter. You know, but but that 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 album cover, man, that was something else. You know. Also, uh, John Lodge, the legendary basis of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Moody Blues, he's going to be celebrating 55 years of Days of Future Past, and he's going right. out on tour as well. I mean, that's amazing to me that, you know, it's like, I believe it was the Who that said you can't trust anybody over 40, or was it 20 or 30, whatever it is. Yeah, now, but the Who just these... played, uh, the, the, the Who just played Hollywood Bowl last week. I just saw him two weeks ago. It was unbelievably good. Yep. Uh, who was, doing, was, be uh, all who right, was but... doing the gig, Kurt? Oh, it was the tour. I'm sure it was Claire, probably. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Okay. This was the who you saw? Yeah. Yeah. Daltrey can still sing everything. And Pete Townsend's guitar tones were like the best I've ever heard him play. Now, he's 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 played with tinnitus. Yeah, they're all on ears. And it's as quiet a stage as you can get. But they had an orchestra with him. Zach Starkey on drums and uh, Pete's brother uh, also on guitar. Great band. Was, uh, who yeah. uh, was Pino doing bass, Kurt? I didn't know the bass player, but it wasn't Pino. Uh, Pino I, Palladino, no, wild it was, guy. It wasn't wasn't him. Oh, okay. I didn't recognize the guy's name, but um, oh, okay, it was good. Everybody. The Hollywood Bowl. I saw the Moody Blues with the L.A. Philharmonic doing the entire Days of Future Past album. Oh, yeah. That was pretty cool. They never did that before, so it was pretty cool. Hollywood Bowl yeah. uh, always gets the, the good gigs, you know? Oh, it's... yeah, what a sound in that. For an outdoor arena, I mean, I, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to work with the LA Philharmonic, and wow. it is just amazing what they were able to do in, in that place. Every seat is a, an amazing, every seat's a great seat. 17,000. 17,000 yep. seats. I mean, the right latest here? gig, uh, I mean, uh, Kurt, the latest gig I did there, I was working in a truck, you know, uh, you know, the hallway coming up, the roads coming up in, in the back to, uh, uh, to the uh, Hollywood Bowl. I was in a Hulu truck. And, oh, man, you know, Pab sent me, spent, uh, you know, stems. And yeah, yeah, that's one for the books with yeah. me. 
Well, know. there's one thing I want to say, uh, okay, about the Who, because it, it's that was one of the, that was my favorite band when I was growing up. You know, before I could drive, so we hitch I hitchhiked to Boston because a friend of mine ha had moved from where I, in Queens, and she said she had tickets to the Who, and we get there, and it turns out that she didn't have tickets, and I had hitchhiked <laughs> hours and hours and hours, and I was damned if I was going to be denied seeing the who and I didn't know anything about you know concert halls or whatever and so I went down to the Boston Garden early in the afternoon really in the and when I was 17 I looked like I was 13 I mean I was really young looking and I you had I a pro up, dude oh yeah and and I was you know high all the time you know so basically and I so I started walking around the block and I came to the truck entrance you know the loading dock and i started talking to this truck driver and we were talking and talking and talking and talking and then he got called away and when he got called away i immediately went inside and as i was walking inside one of the security guards said hey what are you doing and another guy says oh that's the truck driver's nephew you know and, and they said well here you need this pass and they gave me a pass they gave me a pass you know like one of the a wrist thing and now i'm running around backstage and i'm saying uh oh i'm gonna get caught you know whatever it is but i'm walking down the hall and there is ronnie van zandt you know oh because i should tell you this that the the, the uh you know the uh, the two acts um was um that let's see uh, all of a sudden leonard skinnard and the who right and so yeah. Ronnie Van Zandt says, oh, you're the truck driver's nephew. Come on, I want you to meet the rest of the band. And he, he I mean, I'm like blown away, you know. And I go into the, go into the, and they're smoking pot. And they say, they say, hey. And uh, Jack Daniels. Well, I don't remember the Jack Daniels, but I do remember them smoking a pot. And I said, hey, you guys want to really get high? I got something really good, <laughs> you know. And then. I got high with them and then they we I had to leave. And so now I'm standing backstage at the at, at the Who concert. I just watched Leonard skin it and now the Who is nowhere to be found. And I'm standing backstage right by the right by the wings, you know, where they where they stack mm -hmm. the, where, they, where they used to stack the subs and Choco and the at the time, by the way. Don't remember, but all I know is I heard oh, a story yeah. that, that that their engineer had been stuck at customs coming from Canada and they couldn't get through. And uh, it turns out years later, years later, I met this guy, um, John, uh, what was John's last name? I can't Phillips. remember. John. What? I don't, I don't think it was that. He was, a, he was, a, I, I, uh, the name will come to me. But anyway, I, I ended up meeting the engineer and I told him that story and we ended up becoming friends because he was actually another friend of mine, uh, Michael Gladstone's friends. And um, oh, okay. that, then when my birthday party came along, he came and seeing he was their engineer, he brought John, John Entwistle to the party. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I just, uh, so my, my relations with the who, I just rambled on, blah, 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 blah. But that's right. the story, you know. I should so, have had it more prepared. May I, I ask a question, Mr. Landy? Yes. Bruce, uh, Steve, what's going on down south? Post hurricanes <laughs> now. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, we've been real, real busy. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We Who you got running through? We didn't have any problems here. Oh, yeah, but uh, who do you have uh, running through as far as artists? That's my question. Oh. I'm sorry I didn't phrase it right. be honest with you, I don't, I don't keep up with any of it. I'm, I'm uh, Ask watching, him about I'll the redheads. There. Watching grandbabies, and, and actually I have been working, uh, unfortunately. I've been actually having to go out and work because they're so busy, they're shorthanded. Hey, are the catfish jumping and is the cotton high? I haven't even been to my camp in almost three months. <laughs> really? So you don't know if the bullheads are running? Well, the river's real low, so the fishing ought to be really good where we are. Mm -hmm. Just haven't had opportunity to get down there. Yeah. Well. Yeah. David, are you going to be called in uh, from the Microsoft crew for this weekend's gig or Microsoft cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the R and R hall of fame, you know, 
No, I I have nothing to do with that at all. Well, yeah, I mean that's your local gig, so I figured you you, you might get a bump on it. No, you know? no, they got you know when it comes to something like that, they got their own crew. Yeah, all the time. So yeah, well, and it would. I have hate that in-house gig that they have. I really do. Yeah, and it would be a union gig anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you got a card, right? Nah, I let no, I, I never got into 33 or 695 because they didn't want to give me any kind of accommodation. I was a right. member of I was a member, I had a card from a local in Virginia, which is a whole nother story. But when I tried to get into the local in LA, it was you have to get on the list and then you have yeah. to get one call a month for 18 months. So I said to them, Hey, I'm a brother, how about 12 months? I said, Nope, 18 months. Just like everybody yeah. else. And who can be around once a month for 18 months without going on the road? So it just never happened. And I never needed it. You know, if I needed a contract, I had a Virginia card. So it didn't matter. Right. Well, I had a Louisiana card. And yeah, I'm paying the price for having that. You know where that comes from. Uh, I mean, you just pay the price and you get it. Uh, and you know, somehow I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's local there and I'm paying my dues. But uh, yeah, yeah, that that hurt me on on a, uh, you know, on a Super Bowl gig, you know. Well, I just want to let you know, Greg. I just want to let you know if you're tired of doing that, Amazon plans on hiring 150 new workers. You know, you can get a job in the factory there. You know, <laughs> I thought they were laying people off. No, no? It says Amazon, Ooh, Amazon or, yeah. or, or you? No, no, Amazon. Amazon. Plans on hiring 150 new workers in the U.S. to, to meet the demands of the heavy, busy hop, holiday shopping season. The company said. Oh, um, shopping season. Time season. So, why, uh, Jan? Why aren't you and Bo doing that there in Bangkok? I'm shipping uh, four boxes, four Amazon boxes right now to the Kingdom of Bhutan, which has to go through your local Bangkok warehouse. Hey, you want a spiff? Well, thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. But Sound Broker is keeping <laughs> me busy enough. You know, know. It's, it's keeping Bo busy. You know, enough. I'm giving you grief. Well, no grief at all. I'm, uh, you know, it's better than it's better than living in Korea right now. Did you guys see what happened in Korea? I mean, could you believe? <coughs> you know, it's like that was their first live event, and it just shows that people can't wait to get out of their houses. And we see what's going on in the touring season. But 156 people were 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 were, were crushed to death. Is that not outrageous? Yeah, but you know what? Anything We've about seen that? gigs where it's happened you know i have i don't know about y'all but uh, i've never seen 156 people get killed is that, a K -pop <coughs> too. Is that some kind of k-pop gig yeah no no it was basically it's uh, it's it's down in the party uh you know central you know part of seoul and yeah there's some great party places down there but basically what i understand is this is it was a it was a downhill slope street that was crowded uh and eleven thousand something like eleven thousand people tried to get in at the same time and then there was just a, a surge where the people in the begin in the front of the were were couldn't go anywhere and they got crushed they they fell down because it was a downhill slope but it was 119k jan I think you you lost the zero. No, the whole and the whole event was, but in this oh, one street yeah. where all where all the people got uh, oh, that got yeah. crushed, it was there was only eleven thousand people. That's a lot of people. That is an awful lot of people for a small street. Yeah. And then you know, you know, so uh, so yeah. Anybody have any opinions? horrible? And then the second thing that happened yesterday was their nemesis to the north just fired 21 missiles and you know the military had to go holy crap uh so yeah 
Yeah, but the I world is a hotbed right now. The world bed is a hot. The world is a hotbed of activity. What's going on right now is crazy time for everybody. Because whether you think you're going to be affected by it or not, you we we you know look look what happened in Ukraine. Who would have thought that anything that could have happened in Ukraine would affect us in the United States or for that matter in Thailand? What I am seeing because of that is I'm seeing an abundance of Russians who rushed over here because they didn't want to fight. And there's also a, there's, yep. no, there's hardly any Ukrainians here anymore. They all went back to fight, but the Russians are all here now because they didn't want to fight. You know, so uh, but but there's, you know, with and Ukraine- you know what uh, I'm hearing from my friends, Jan, that they're uh, down at Soy 11 on Sukhumvit and all, you know, those places that thrive down on Soy 11, Sukhumvit and Bangkok. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I used to stay at a hotel called the Grand President, which was right across the street from the loft, which is the, like one of the bigger clubs over there. And, uh, you know, but it, it's, it, no, the nightlife in Bangkok is just off the hook. I mean, I love Bangkok. It's it's yeah. alive. The city is alive. Because you were at the loft there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, it was right across the street. We were in the transvestite yeah. capital right there. Yep, that's right. Look for the Adam's, Adam's apple. Well, you know, they shave them off these days. You know, the number one, yeah. the number one thing that they do in in in, in, in the hospital in Bumagraden, which is the hospital, is uh, is sexual transformation operations right now. Right. That's at an all time high. People from all over the world, so they could shave off the Adam's apple. You know, At, my rule of thumb is this: if if a woman is too good looking. She's a she 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 is yeah. a woman in disguise. Boy Let's put toy. it that way, you know. Too much you know? makeup, too. I don't yeah. want to get into. I don't want to get in. Well, I never get that close, Bruce. To find out, I will tell you that right now. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get beat up by both. That's for sure. If well, you then, well we're not try. in Bangkok. We're in. We're, I'm in Rawai, which is a little, little right. Like an right. expat community here in 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 the island of Phuket, which is in, of course, the country of Thailand. But we are going to Bangkok for Thanksgiving, I believe. So. Oh, okay. Well, stay at friend. Soy Nineteen or in a soak, you know. Probably going to stay at the Marriott again because they know me there and they take good care of me, you know. Uh, Weston Sukhumvit. You're West you're Sukhumvit. right next to you're right next to Centrum. And, uh, you know, uh, Robinson's is right there, sir. Yeah, Robinson, if you don't know, Robinson's a, an amazing department store, high-end department store, really nice. Uh, they just opened the new one here in, in Phuket, and everybody's rushing to it. It's, uh, it's, it's very nice. I just bought a pillow there, as a matter of fact, so... Uh, which, of course, is really something that you really you guys are, you know, probably going to be dreaming about the night that, wow, Jan bought a pillow. Unbelievable. You know? <laughs> so, there you have it. Uh, hey, well, so let's talk about something else. What do you guys think about this elimination of junk fees that the uh, all and, and, you know, that basically the all in ticket pricing on um, on the horizon, you whereas they have to tell you every fee so there'll be no surprises like no resort fee all of a sudden at the end or no uh uh air, you know landing fees at the airport or any of that i think that's a great idea have you guys heard anything about that, that the white house wants to do that i think it's a great idea too you know when you rent a car all the fees are included on the bottom line didn't didn't used to be long ago but yeah the whole resort fee bullshit thing and all that stuff they add on you know it's oh, just yeah it, 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 it should and, and, it should you all know, it should all be on there when they quote pricing, you a price. If you want to get a bottle of water from CBS, uh, depending on how many people that are there, you know, a bottle of water could be eleven bucks. Really, you know? that changes. Yeah. Wow. That's all about surge pricing. I know that you know Uber does that, which makes me crazy because a lot of times when I'm doing a budget, I'll have to estimate cab fares, and you know you can estimate all day long. And when you actually go to t take an Uber ride, it could be like radically different from what they told you it was going to be based on how busy anybody is at any given point in time. And I think that's bullshit. You know, it's just make it expensive all the time because I really don't care. I just I want it to be right. Yeah, and then they give you the choices of of what kind of car you want. Uh, it's too damn um, confusing. And <laughs> 
But the worst thing about it is, is that when you, when you, when you call an Uber, it, it, a lot of times the drivers will just say, I want that run. They don't, they're nowhere really near where they say they are. And then they click that run. So they lock everybody else out. So the closer people can't get to it. And I hate that part, especially at the, at the Las Vegas airport. When last time I was there, I needed an Uber. And it, it, it took the guy about 20 minutes to get there when I was seeing all these other Ubers fly by. And so I realized what this person did was, is they locked up a fare because they wanted, they were heading towards that airport, even though they were nowhere near it. And they locked up the fare for me and I had to wait for them. I didn't like that. I've had Ubers. I, I went to the airport from here one time and I set it up a day early, which never works, by the way. And then when they weren't here, you know, you call in and you try to figure it out. And the guy was like an hour away and he said, well, I can't be there for an hour yet. And I'm like, well, I'm going to the airport. You got to be here now or it's over, you know, and they, he couldn't do it. So we canceled the ride and I got dinged six bucks or whatever the cancellation fee is, which is bullshit because it was him that wasn't here. And then there, there's no 800 number to call. You can't put a complaint in. You can't work out a problem. You know, you're just basically hosed. And you know, well, so that's the whole thing about this. So that would protect you because this the, the this new law that they want to get together would be that they can't charge you for something that's not your fault. Like for example, uh, a check that bounces. It's not your fault. So why should you be charged for it? Yeah, I agree. I, I never understood that myself. Why charge me when you know, yeah. If try it was my check, out, try figuring out what the little three dollar and ninety-five cent charge on your Apple account is or how to turn it right. off to go away. Right. I, or, I've got stuff I can't even know. I don't even know what it is. I've got like book memberships I bought for my daughter when she was four that I'm still paying for. And there's just no path to turning it off. Okay. Right. There is a, there, there is, there is a an very confusing to, to get to it. There is an answer to that. And it's called true bill, but I think they just changed it to rocket bill. Uh, let me see if I could find it. I think it's I think it's now called Rocket Money. Rocket Money. Um, and don't uh, go I, there. They're going to try right. and sell, uh, upsell you big time. Well, yes, they're going to let you, you do it. Everything. So everything. was it on your credit card? It what just, you do yeah, is you put it in just bills to my account. Oh, because I kept getting a I kept getting a charge from Disney Mobile. I don't know what the hell Disney Mobile is, and I researched the hell out of it and couldn't figure it out. So I kept calling my Citibank card, which is through Costco, right? And they kept saying, we'll take it off, we'll take it off. And they did, and they and they kept checking it out, and they couldn't figure the whole thing out. But I kept getting billed for it. It was like $7 a month for Disney Mobile, and I couldn't, we, not, we could not figure well, it out. Well, you had, uh, somehow you had Disney Plus. Well, I had Disney Plus for a while, and then I canceled it, and I didn't get billed for it for the longest time, and all of a sudden, mobile started showing up. So basically, with the Costco card, I just canceled the card and had them reissue me a card, so I had to run down there and, and have them you know, attach my uh, Costco account to it. So that I, I think can get show up as, it doesn't even say that. I had some false Uber stuff once, but it just says, like, vendor with Apple something. Right. It doesn't say what it is or any number or what the bill's for. And uh, you look in your subscriptions on your iTunes or whatever it's called now. It's not, th these things aren't in there. They're not in the subscriptions. It's, it's like build and I don't even know what it is or how to stop it. <laughs> well, sort of it's like, very, well uh, it's Kurt, I've been being charged for the last 20 years for a security app on my broke ass old Apple you know, Intel i5, you know, stuff. It was a great app, but I can't figure it out. And I canceled my, I put it on my debit card stupidly. And I've canceled it three times and they find me. And then, they find you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're and easily found. You, you're, 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 you are you are you are in the phone book. That's it. Uh, for those people who don't know what a phone book is, uh, you Google it. Uh, but you're in the phone book, man. You're in there. You're in their database. So I got I got a stupid one for you. Remember all us old you old guys, right? Remember TV Guide? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so I had a ninety nine a month. I had a subscription to TV Guide for like a billion years, right? And then all of a sudden, something happened, and I started getting two of them. And it might have been me. I might have done something. I don't know what the hell. And I started getting two of them every month. So I called them up, and I said, 
what's the deal? And they said, oh, you have these two accounts, you know? And I said, well, combine the damn things and only charge me for one. So they did, they combined it, right? And I stopped paying on the other account. Well, everything was fine for years and years and years. And then I went to sell my house. <laughs> And, and you I, had a lien. I had a lien from TV Guide for $325, and that just hosed me time-wise for the house thing, dealing with getting the lien off for $325. Luckily, I kept all my paperwork because it was this account that they had folded over. They had combined accounts, <laughs> right? But they What's still had horrible the about that, uh, Bruce, is they illegally uh, put a somehow did a lien on your fixed asset account from a revolving asset account. Well, those Man. were the days, you know, those were the days where we weren't, didn't have this kind of uh, consumer protection that we have today. Yeah. This is in the eight, late eighties, but boy, I'll tell you, I'll when I was acting, when I was acting, I remember how excited I was when I saw my name in TV Guide. I, I, I just have to tell you, it was amazing. And then I realized that, you know, like it was just that sticker on the, and it also had my address. Uh, you know, it was like, you know. <laughs> so were, were you that excited when you saw your name in Playgirl? <laughs> <laughs> or IMDB. Uh, Jan is really big in IMDB. And, oh, yeah. The big guy. I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you a little aside. You know, when I was younger, I wanted to get a copy of Playboy, but I felt that mine, I, you know, I wanted a subscription to Playboy, but I felt that my name, you know, I, this is what I was thinking when I was a kid, that Jan Landy, they'd know I was 13, you know? So I, I had to come up with a name. I felt that there was no way that this guy would be 13, you know? So I came up with Radwell Clark the Third. I still remember this, Radwell Clark the Third, And uh, I ordered the Playboy subscription. Of course, I got it until my parents found out about it. And then, why? <laughs> you reuse that name, I believe. Jim. I haven't actually used it. I, I, I always, I it just re certain things how you remember something for no reason whatsoever. Why you remember it? You know, it's it's crazy how that happens. You know, and and everybody has different memories of the same thing that you you know you'll be talking to somebody and they will remember something that you guys did together that you can't remember at all and yet you'll remember something that you did together with them that they can't remember at all it's it's crazy how memory works anybody have that, so, any other examples of something like that oh yeah but not sure. willing to share publicly <laughs> yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> David knows me that long, so he's got those stories, and I hope he forgets them, but I'm sure he remembers them. <laughs> I, I think I remember. You know, Jan, right? Jan? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll just third. give you, you know how certain things bring up a memory. Cam Camaro. You know, that's it, Camaro. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. That was my car, uh, the Camaro. Anyway, uh, let's see. Moving on. Elon Musk took control of uh, Twitter. What do you guys think of that? Love it. Put his foot in his mouth, that's for sure. Yep, you're right there. Ah. You know what? You know what I don't understand, and th and this is something that maybe somebody in the room can tell me. So he walks into Twitter the first day, and he's carrying a bathroom sink. Why wouldn't he be carrying the kitchen sink? <laughs> I thought the same thing. <laughs> but I you know what? That's the exact same way, uh, way, Jan. I was out. I was on a break after uh, getting my ears burned out uh, with uh, Iron Maiden in 83. <clears throat> so I moved uh, to Silicon Valley. And here comes, you know, this guy who's now a gazillionaire walking in to a company that he was taken off with you know he he bought us and yeah i was one of the engineers that got let go uh but uh was this elon yeah. musk yes sir yeah that was his paypal crew and he's done the exact same thing with the treated uh the twitter folks you know 
Well, it's a little uh, scary. It's a little scary this time because the biggest partner he's got for billions of dollars are the Saudi Arabians. And yep. so all of a sudden, a media giant like Twitter, which basically most people, I don't know who gets their news from Twitter. It's certainly not I. But uh, how many people in this room get their news from Twitter? Does anybody get their news from Twitter? And uh, also the salt, sir. Are which you is saying down in your area. Are you saying the Sultan gets his news from Twitter? No. A Sultan is an investor, sir. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Basically, you know, now all of a sudden, our media system in America, which is Twitter, you know, which is an American company, is now owned by foreign and by, mm. by foreign investment. Mm -hmm. You know, and now Elon Musk wasn't born in America either, but uh, but uh, but he is an American citizen right now. But, but it's crazy. You know what? Uh, you know what I have to say about that statement, Jan, is is that people who get their news from Twitter are like. Bah. Yeah, lame, 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 lame. Yeah, yeah but there's a, I mean, but 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 basically, it's it's an it's a non what do they say non um, moderated system. So you could put anything you want in there, and that's one of the challenges is that there's no way to validate what's real and what's imagined in this respect, especially now with AI. I mean, AI is coming along. So, um, are you, have you, has anybody experienced with, with Dolly, D-A-L-L-E, anybody? I played with yes. it. Yes. You told us it's about it. It's crazy what they, I mean, you know. Yep. And they're saying now that I artists, got my own avatar and I have hair now. Yes. And they're saying that yeah. artists, you know, like <laughs> computerized art is now replacing real artists as well. And, and I just got an app called I'm, i want to, it's i think it's called mubert let me just go look at it yeah oh, m-u-b-e-r-t yeah. have you seen this this is this is this is ai ai music and you could create mm -hmm. your own songs with backing tracks with everything um and and it's it's free because Staying it's within AI. the you lines of the riaa to so only capture <clears throat> one or two bars and uh, yeah, you're not going to get fined. Well, it doesn't matter because it, there's no digital signature on this, so there's no way that the, that people can 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 find it if it was if it was being copied. But this is all AI. You create your own music. So even if you don't know anything at all about the the, um, you don't even know what the musical scale is. Yeah, uh, you still can create your own songs now. Yeah, but Jan, if somebody stupid in in your area in south asia went ahead and created on that platform with four bars of stairway to heaven dun da dun dun da dun yeah they're gonna get busted big time not here. I don't think in Asia because the 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 the, the copyright uh, the copyright and the the registration of music and, and, and they, I mean they get away with crazy stuff here and and there you can buy a box here in the store that will will stream anything you want from anywhere in the world. So so you've been the Pantip Plaza, sir. Yeah, and you know where they closed it. Do you know this? The Pantip Plaza. No. Yes, it's it's closed. It's it was when I went there. I went there because I wanted to buy some electronics. It was closed thanks to COVID. Now I don't know if they've reopened it, but when I was there, it was a, just an empty space. Everything was cleaned out from Pound Tip. Everything. Wow. Wow. Now, what, for those people who don't know what we're talking about, just imagine going into a bazaar, you know, a street bazaar where it's, there's a million five things. floors. Say again. It was five floors tall. Yeah, five five floors of just anything you could think of electronically, any kind of cell phone, television, computer, 
anything at all, home appliances, just like wall to wall and zillions of people and everything was, it, it was just a crazy place. I loved going there. Any cable you could think of, any, any kind of crazy electronic gas gadget or gizmo was there. And then the last time I went there, the place was empty. It was a shell of a building. Wow. I couldn't believe it. Sounds so, like hard. I there. used to go there and, and buy uh, both EX and Midas firmwares for, you know, 50 bucks, you know, a stick. Oh yeah, if you when when CDs were there or games, you could buy any game for like nothing. Oh. And it was all bootlegged, of course, but there's nobody yeah. to stop. No, I'm it's talking Hall about guess. Go ahead, sir. So it's like Hall A at Nam. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, Hall A at Nam. Well, there's nothing like Hall A at Nam. Uh, you know, when in its prime. You know, that's it. That's a that's an experience of a lifetime. If you've never been there, well, I don't. I, I hope it gets back to that craziness. But the weirdest things you could ever see in your life, that people would do, you'll find there with the greatest costumes. And it's not Halloween either. You know. Which, yeah, the uh, days of spandex and big hair is gone. You can't get into Nam now unless you, uh, you know, have a connection. Or wear a night bob shirt. You can get in the NAM right now wearing a night bob shirt. I'm sorry. NAM's not going on. But hey, David, speaking of craziness, did you go to West Hollywood for Halloween? They didn't close it up. They just, uh, you know, when the monkeypox thing came out, it freaked everybody out. And so they canceled a Halloween in West Hollywood again. Well, so, David, tell people about West Hollywood and Halloween so, so they understand. Right. So West Hollywood is a town that has a reputation for being extremely pro-gay, LBGTQ plus whatever. And the, its first mayor was gay. And it's its own city in L.A. L.A. has Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, Burbank. A few of them are actual cities that have their own charters, their own mayors. And the rest of it is all part of L.A., giant, giant L.A. So West Hollywood can do what it wants. And Santa Monica Boulevard, which goes right down the middle of West Hollywood, is like four or five lanes, six lanes across, and then more on the other side of, of uh, greenery. And so they shut down the street for almost a mile and open it up for costumes. And what happens is, is that because it's such a large gay community in West Hollywood, the people who've never gone to this before think that it's all debauchery, you know, guys with costumes showing their asses and all of that. And in reality, during especially like seven to nine, it's full of families and straights and gays. But the 50,000 gay people who live in West Hollywood are now dwarfed by 250,000 people who don't live in West Hollywood. And it's one of the most fun things to do that not everybody knows about. The costumes are unbelievable. And, and don't forget the cars, though, that go uh, that goes down uh, West no, Hollywood the streets Boulevard. Are, the streets are closed. Yeah, but I mean, uh, on the other weekends, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, yeah, but I'm just talking about Hollywood. Uh, Halloween in West Hollywood is an experience. And last night, it, people still showed up, but they had to stop for the cars and you know, they were on the sidewalk, so it just wasn't the same. Next year, hopefully they'll have it, and I'll not be working that weekend, and I'll be there. And it's just yes, David, David went there a few, quite a few years in a row, and he took some amazing pictures. I believe they're up on his Facebook page, right? Uh, some of them are, yeah. I've posted all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I mean, the costumes are, re are unbelievable. It is professional. or is, And the other thing that's interesting is, is that hundreds and hundreds of people come over from Asia, young people, because they want to enjoy Halloween. And so you see these groups of Asian girls dressed as baseball players or waitresses. I mean, it's just, it's incredible to watch. It's an incredible experience. It's, it's not Mardi Gras, but it's one of the best things in the country to go to. That's and that's kind of what happened uh, in, in Korea with all these people, because it was the first time everybody young could go out and party in the best party district in Seoul without masks. 
Right. But you got to remember that, you know, you're looking at a, like a narrow alley. We're looking yeah. at 100 feet across Santa Monica Boulevard. That, right. So the, the crowds are there. There's three times or four times the number of people that were in Seoul. And yet oh, you, yeah. don't have, you don't have those crowds at all. I mean, there's plenty of space to get around. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing experience. By the way, you were talking about the crowds. The only time I was ever in a place where I could actually lift my feet off the ground and not fall was Mardi Gras Tuesday in uh, New Orleans. That uh, right there on Bourbon Street, there were so many people packed together with the, you know, show your, show your tits and throw down the beads and all of that, that I lifted my feet off the ground and I did not touch. <laughs> it was like that when the Saints won the Super Bowl. We went down. Oh, there. yeah. It was great. You are right, sir. I yeah, was your down came there. into Vegas. And they taught us a lesson this uh, this last weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, my bucks are done. You know. So, what to say? So, did you hear the story right now? Lake Mead is at a. You know, speaking of Las Vegas, Lake Mead is at its lowest point ever, and now they're finding bodies like chiclets down there you know like they're finding it's like amazing this this they found another body six six bodies have been discovered this year and like me you know from the days of the gangsters you know where the, you know where they used to i'm i'm positive that where i live in henderson in the in the old days when the the gangsters were ruling las vegas that they would you know henderson was just a wasteland and they would go out there and bury the dead you know that they would kill in the desert which that's where henderson I'm positive that somewhere underneath my house, uh, there's some gangsters buried, you know, but um, who knows? So yeah. what do you think they're going to do about that water situation? I just, it just keeps getting lower and lower and people just don't seem to be talking about it. I mean, well, they're well, talking about it, but they're not talking about fixing anything. I mean, what do you do? I just don't know. Uh, look at the Mississippi well, River. That's, yeah, okay. the Mississippi That's exactly stuff. what I was going to say, David. You know, they were uh, talking about piping in water from the Mississippi River, but now the Mississippi River's so damn low, that wouldn't be a good idea either. <laughs> the Great Lakes are the only place they can get water from. Anyway, then it won't be so great if they do that. But, you know, and, and just to go, to go on with this, they found a World War II era landing craft there. They found an ancient volcanic rock in Lake Mead. And so they, they're finding all sorts of stuff in the, in the lake. But, but it's a bigger problem because it's also how they generate our electricity for most of the, most of the Pacific. Yeah. You know? And uh, at a certain point, but, the water levels will be too low where they won't be able to generate hydroelectric power. But, but yeah, yeah, you know what, Jan? I, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you know, uh, West Coast water stuff is, you know, so highly political. It uh, is. They should just build more desal plants so we don't have to yeah. get water from Las Vegas. If anybody wants to know about the history of it, uh, there's a great movie called Chinatown with Jack Nicholson. It's old. Yep. It's all about the water wars and most of the water, most of the water uh, rights and and zoning comes from before there were people living, you know, the, the bulk of people that were living there. These are from the 1800s, all of these, all, all of these treaties that they have about water. But the chat, but but living in Las Vegas is different than living in, let's say, Salt Lake City. So Salt Lake City, they're having a huge drought over there. However, <coughs> the magnesium levels of Salt Lake City, as it gets exposed, is starting to expose the 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 elements of magnesium and and hot, heavy chemicals into the air whereas las vegas doesn't have that the other thing is is that las vegas knew that it was in the desert so for years and years and years they've been rebuilding their 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 water structure so now las vegas uses something like 90 something percent of all of our water is recycled all of it um, so, yeah, but it's it's the farmlands in southern Arizona, and then it all goes back to the sharing system, Dan, of, oh, you're the first guy in the pipe? Oh, therefore, uh, yeah, you know, you're number one in the line. Um, and uh, yeah, 
And it's, so a, it's amazing how much more the farmland uses than the people. It's amazing. Not saying yeah. that it's not important, but that's just a fact. It's like five to one or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we need yeah. that. We need that water because we want to eat. Well, you know? no, no. Not saying we don't need it. I'm just saying it's amazing. You know. Well, you know, it's interesting. California produces something like eighty or ninety percent of the world's almonds. Yeah. And as it turns out, almonds are the most water inefficient crop you can have. Yeah. Yes. And so. If we stop making almonds, the world loses all their almonds, but we end up with a ton of water. So it's kind of like, what do you do? We well, stop we trying to save a fish that's not even supposed to be there and give them back well, their damn water. I don't think it's that rice. way, Bruce. I really don't. I mean, up north where it's only the is, beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it may be an issue, but and. Yeah, in the Colorado uh, River Basin, no, it's agricultural. People. Oh no, no, no! Yes, yes, yes. But the San Joaquin Valley, where where uh, uh, where David's talking about, all comes down from uh, the watershed up by Sacramento. You know, which all that water goes out to the sea because they're so afraid they're going to hurt a fish that's not even supposed to be there. I yeah. mean, I San, San, San Joaquin Valley problem is. A lot of it is those stupid little fish. They want to save this fish, which, uh, is, which wow. is dumb. The snail darter. Do you know your camera's no longer on? Oh, me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're looking at a shack on the side of some mountain. <laughs> That's right. That's uh, uh, Tucson. I'm just kidding. I, it's I, a cool I place. Because, you know, it's 9 o'clock in the afternoon here, sir, and I don't want to especially if we're being recorded i don't want to offend anybody across the world uh but seeing we're being recorded is there anything you want to say about a job that you have coming up to tell everybody how special you really are the human mic stand uh, is i'm not special you know you i'm the mixing human mic stand in my mind right. you know it's like you know yep yep uh, and you're rolling, i'm mixing you a rocket that, and it's rolling, rolling out on friday and God hope we're going to go ahead and mix it, and it's going to be the loudest. I've done, I've done five Donningtons and four Rock Pops, and I had to take a half a decade off after working uh, for uh, Maiden uh, at Rock and Rio. Uh, it was, I was a sacrificial engineer. You know what that means. I'm the guy with the microphone, you know, halfway between the desk and them when Doug Hall was having, Doug Hall, who was, doing, uh, who was doing Maiden, was having a, a volume fight with Night Bob, who was doing Kiss. And, you know, God help all the people that were down there in the pits. They can't hear anything now. Well, first of all, I want to ask you a question, which I should have asked you. How are you healing from the being that human mic stand at the Tampa game? Oh, uh, I'm doing okay with it. Uh, I'm on injured reserve until I don't think Tampa's going to make it into the playoffs. But I'm still, you know, the NFL are cool. Yeah. Did you get the license got, plate number of the running the running back that ran into you? Yep. A wide receiver 15 uh, from <laughs> Kansas City. Yep. I, he was a nice guy. He really did. He sent me a grant for my medical expenses. Yeah, well, even really though. Nice that's really nice of him. And it's yeah, nice he felt bad about celebrity it. Because, present. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I was knocked out. And, you know, I'm an old dude si uh, sitting there with my parabolic dish. And I made the ultimate mistake. Never turn your back to the field of play when the ball is snapped. And I had a cable that was snagged. And so I was grabbing it. And then 
you know, in the IP, I just heard the producer screaming. And uh, well, let me ask you something. Do you think that if you were facing the field, that you would have been able to get out of the way because it happened so fast? Damn straight. Damn straight. I would have pushed somebody else in there. I would have pushed a damn cheerleader in the way. You know, <laughs> that's what I like to hear. A man amongst men. Yeah, that's it. A yeah. man amongst men. Uh, <coughs> everything's an opinion. And in this case, that opinion don't count. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Uh, did you know right now that that sleep tourism is becoming a thing? Did you know that sleep, and I'm not talking about like watching this show uh, back up on YouTube, whatever, it's going to put you to sleep. I'm talking about really seriously, there are now hotels out there that are putting in soundproof walls, pillow menu, bedroom, bedtime tea, uh, sleep focused rooms are popping up in hotels and resorts all across the world. CNN did a story on it, we'll throw a link in there. But I know that I've had some problems going to sleep in hotels, but it would be really nice to know that they soundproof the rooms, they give you the special pillows, you know, everything like that. Uh, you know, it's, 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 sleep is so important. And uh, I just don't seem to get enough of it, even though I'm now I'm getting like eight hours a night, which is pretty well, amazing. I can never hear you screaming, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, uh, Jan, uh, my only comment would be is, isn't that why God invented iPods? What is an iPod? Maybe you could go uh, back nor, and do uh, uh, Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, ear pods. Oh. Noise canceling ear pods. For all, hey. you, for all you students that are taking up history, uh, iPods. Uh. <laughs> I've had the same, and they were noise, uh, noise canceling uh, headphones, sir. So. Probably Come work. on, it's the, it's, new, the oh. new versions of noise canceling headphones are getting better and better and better. And uh, as they develop chips that could that could could really take yeah. out frequency from 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 the hearing part of it. So that uh, it's just amazing. Uh, I'm using the 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 original uh, AirPod Pros, and they really do an amazing job in taking out a lot of the uh, the noise that would bother you. Sometimes I'll even sleep with them. They help you get to sleep. But, uh, you know, like the over the year ones, like the Bose and the Sonys, they're just spectacular uh, of how they. Yeah, you know, they hurt, though. Easy. I mean, well, if, is, if, if, is anybody ahead. doing any in-ear molds that have noise canceling on them? Because I have two pairs of ultimate ears, but neither one of them are noise canceling. But uh, mine are getting pretty old now. But I just wonder, I wonder if anybody's doing that. Have you heard? Well, there's definitely a company that makes uh in ears that have microphones built in. Yes. J and H. Sensophonics or somebody. Yep. And also J and H here at, uh, at H uh, in Orlando. Because that would be uh, perfect because, you know, when you get molds, you can't hear shit. I almost missed a flight because I was sitting in my seat listening to something and they called to board the plane and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ears, but you know, mold, still, molds are great. Uh, hmm? And you know that's a that's a downside with with molds because you know you don't you don't realize the volume that you're getting at and then you know when you're walking off the plane somebody says you know goodbye thank you for flying with me and i go yeah okay you know, I, I when I first got my molds, you know, I was going to wear, I started wearing them on the planes and stuff like that. And I ended up getting my old Sony's back out because they, they seal up your ears so good that you're oblivious to everything. But right. I'll, I'll tell you where the ear molds work really well is at the NASCAR races. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I roll up the cable and stick it in my pocket and I put my ears in, you know, and there's just enough engine noise so you can hear what's going on. With, with the cars going by, but boy, what a savior that is, because even the foamies don't work. You know, it is so loud. <laughs> yeah, well, another, and, and another, you know what, Bruce, place. It, it, on this gig that I, I'm doing to where, you know, my job is to capture six hertz at maximum volume without uh, distortion and then all the harmonics, I'm not allowed to wear. I'm not allowed to wear molds. 
so uh, you can can you actually hear that or is it a feeling do you just get sick it's to your a stomach feeling. <laughs> did it take a couple times before you stopped getting sick to your stomach i mean what's the resident point of your bowels i don't know it was like six uh, or yeah. something <laughs> we're all required to wear bowels uh diapers really oh my god that's what that's that's crazy stuff yeah. I mean, those the, the 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 noise isolation is really good because right now it's it's becoming a problem. Bustling cities, there's so much noise, uh, hunking cars, uh, chirping cell phones, <clears throat> baby crying. Right, so and subharmonics so from uh, underground transportation. <sighs> you know, you know, a aircraft taking off. Uh, you so know, they won't let you wear ear protection when you're doing these tests. Um. Uh, I got a pair of cans, all right, but we all signed the agreement that, yeah, we're going to get, the job is six hertz. Six hertz doesn't kill an eardrum. It really doesn't. It kills your insides. That's yeah. what it does. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Well, we got to move on because we're getting to the, we're getting to being about one hour online live. And I just wanted to bring up this, that next Tuesday, so we will have met by the next time we meet, uh, the elections will have taken place. <coughs> I, cannot, oh, I joy. cannot urge you high enough to vote. The voting is so important. And this year, I think, that, you know, like every, every, every year that we go to vote, it always seems to be so important. You know, there's a reason why we need to vote because it's so important. But this year, I really believe democracy is on the line uh, of everything. And if you guys are following what's going down on in Brazil uh, and in Israel and all of these other places, uh, yeah. democracy is just that democracy is so precious. And I highly recommend that everybody goes out and votes. And just remember this year, what you're voting for is you're voting you're voting for the survival of 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 democracy. So. Just, uh, you know, if, if you believe uh, that the election was stolen, well, then there's something wrong with you. And <laughs> that's well, all that's a heavy thing to say. Yeah. Well, um, uh, you know, I got to tell you, it was Halloween on Monday here in Dunedin, Florida. And I had people with red hats and flags banging on my door, asking me for candy for their kids, and then asking me the pledge, you know, for their particular party. Um, you know, I, I respect everybody and their viewpoints, but for that to go ahead and especially with their children to go ahead for me to give them Reese's cups or Kit Kats or whatever. Yikes. And that's Florida. Well, it's all over the place. It's, it's not just Florida, it's everywhere, you know, and the reality is, is that, you know, without going into any more, all I'm going to do is urge you all to vote. And with that, I'm going to say, is there anybody that has anything at all they want to say before we say goodbye to the social media? And then we can stay in the room and talk uh, more like we usually do. And just remember, if you want to join the panel, just send us an email to soundbroker Gmail or DM us from any of the social medias that you're following us on, and we'll send you an invitation on how to get in the panel. So with that, is there anybody that has anything at all they want to say publicly to uh, social media? I only have to say that I have a personal question on a Facebook uh, post, a post from uh, Mr. Gamble on the HC40 to Mr. Hare that we can take offline, sir. Other than that, keep on gigging, y'all. Uh, All right. With that, you don't uh, find democracy at the bottom of Lake Mead. <laughs> well, we're not going to find it at the bottom of Lake Mead. Maybe it'll be floating on the surface, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, but uh, that's uh, it's it's a crazy time we're living in. It's just a crazy time. So I, I want you all to be safe and, and sane and healthy. 
and have a great week and we will see what happens next week next week we'll be talking about what happened in the election uh, you know and see if your candidates won or lost so i wish you all the best i hope everybody gets what they want especially me thanks a lot for that and with that in mind uh, remember uh, to vote and uh, you know as they say in chicago uh, vote early and vote often uh, that's what they say in chicago <laughs> A little aside, I'll get a little joke about Chicago. And with that in mind, uh, just remember you make it happen. Um, thanks for joining us today. Just remember everything you heard was an opinion. So uh, go out and have a great week, and we'll see you again next week, same time, same place. And we are now off the air. If I could figure